Beautiful humans, welcome back to another episode of the I Like Birds podcast. I'm your host, Zach Rippey, and this podcast is dedicated to the non-believers, the confused believers, and the true believers. Because I, at one time or another, was all three, and I'm here to help you get a better understanding of who Jesus is and what he's all about. Let's grow in our faith together. You learn as I learn. I like the Bible, and I like words, so therefore, I like birds. Let's start the show. Ladies and gentlemen, my fellow birds, welcome back to the podcast, to the program, to the place that you need to be today. It is the first day of August, August 1st, 2022. Thank you for being here. Uh, It's been a minute since I've been on the microphone, man. I usually take summer off a little bit. Uh, I'm usually doing stuff with the family, making sure that we're all having a good time, as well as just the things that we're checking off our list for the summer bucket list and project list. Uh, so this year was no different. Last year we were in the RV, so we were doing a lot of traveling. So I uh, took that time off when Noah was here to do the um, from the podcast. But luckily I was able to drop a couple um, right before uh, the month of July started. So we were able to have a couple to really you know fill those gaps and whatnot. But it's been about a couple weeks since we've dropped uh, at least a long one. We did a little short one, a uh, little note section thing that I wrote when I was out by the pond that I wanted to get off my chest and just really share with you guys and just uh, let you know that we're still doing the show, but uh, we're, we're going to start back up in the fall. I know this isn't the fall. You know, this is August, but uh, my summer technically is like kind of wrapping up because uh, Noah just went back to his mom's and he's about to start school, y'all. Uh, yes, he is. He is going back to school. Um, we did the homeschool thing last year, uh, but this year he has uh, communicated that he wants to be back in the classroom, and uh, he found a. He's basically in a. He's in a really good area where uh, the schools are all kind of connected, as far as the uh, intermediate school, uh, the middle school, and then the high school are all kind of the same logo and everything, the same mascot, whatever you want to call it. And he'd be able, they're all like within like, I think a one mile radius and stuff like that of each other. So he's going to be able to grow up with friends and be able to like move along uh, the, the the school journey with a couple uh, buddies, hopefully, uh, Lord willing, uh, and really just connect with people and be a light in the school again. So really happy for him, but also we're praying big time for him. So please keep him on your hearts and, uh, and your prayers for me as he is my uh, only son that's going to be in school this year. Um, what else is going on? Oh yeah. So we had a blast during, during the summer, man. Uh, we had a lot of projects as well. As you guys know, if you've been listening recently, we're on the land now, we're in the new cribbo, uh, feeling good. We just added a porch recently and it's just beautiful. Uh, we just had the dogs that we, uh, <laughs> that we got last year, uh, actually come out to the property. Now we built a little fence for them that they escaped out of multiple times. So then we had to add another fence to the front of the property. Uh, so we just been, you know, running around with our heads cut off, trying to make sure that these dogs stay in the property. And finally they're at the place now where they're used to it here and they come back for dinner and they come, they come around to our house. Now we don't have to worry about them running off and getting hit by a car. So praise God for that. Cause that was been a stressful, uh, time during the summer. Uh, so yeah, keep in mind guys, this episode is going to be very fluid. Uh, I'm trying my best to, what you call it, uh, just, just, kind of catch you up while also just kind of giving you inside baseball in my life while also you know making sure god stays first and at the center and the heart of the podcast uh we're we're getting i got a lot of stuff to talk to you guys about today so keep that in mind uh when i'm sharing something that is mostly just to catch you up and express like you know what we got going on and uh what you missed out on as far as uh what's been going on in the life of zach ribby i know you're here for god but you know what i mean uh it's nice to be able to share with you guys all that we're doing over here and uh, just just really bringing you in because, man, this new life that I'm living is crazy, y'all. I got to say, man, um, I, I was expressing how excited I was about it, and I still am super excited about it. I love getting out there and just doing the work and, you know, sweating and stuff. But it's been hot here in Texas, y'all, to the point of, like, 100 degrees back-to-back-to-back to back to back days, you know, upper 100s, yo, like, uh, man, I am grateful I'm not going to hell. Can I get an amen? Because I do not like this heat. Uh, if you're in Florida, I know y'all are experiencing some heat too. Uh, at least y'all are getting some rain. We have not gotten any rain here. Lord, bring the rain, please. The pond out back is drying up. Yep, the pond behind our house is drying up a little bit, so that's really sad to see. Uh, luckily, the dogs are jumping in and still having a good time, though. 
Uh, fishes are still flopping out there, so hopefully they uh, they survive <laughs> until the fall, until we can get some rain around here. But so yeah, man, we've been building. Uh, me and my buddy Dan, we've been building a chicken coop out here too. So we've been doing that from scratch. Uh, I've been posting that on my Instagram. If you have seen that or if you have not seen that, go check it out. Uh, it's been really fun, man, to just be able to learn woodwork and sawing it up and uh, learning how. Dude, honestly, this is my first time learning how to actually screw nails from one, from one piece of wood to another piece of wood. Or excuse me, screw screws. Uh, see, I don't even know the terminology, but I'm learning, man. I'm really, you know, doing my best out here to try to just get knowledgeable and uh, just try things and watch YouTube videos and try to fix stuff. Uh, being a homeowner is crazy. I actually had to clean out my air conditioning the other day. The coils were, were foaming up and um, just really like getting after it, guys, learning how to put in a fence, uh, doing that whole thing, doing a gate for the fence. Uh, so, man, it's just a lot. A lot's been happening. Luckily, Noah was able to be here and help out with that and just be able to see that. And he started doing some woodwork himself and he actually made Malachi a little horse stable. Uh, he also made himself a toolbox and a little tool station to where he can keep his tools and a workbench. Like, it's so cool when you're able to have children and just live a life that's very uh, free and just open and just open to new ideas and to just see them really take off and really just run with their own ideas and want to be a part of it and create their own stuff. And it's a beautiful thing, y'all. So, uh, this summer has been a special one. We didn't do anything too crazy or fantastic or spectacular or vacation or anything like that, but this was our first summer in our home. And, Man, it just felt good to like live that and experience that. We also got a little kitty, y'all. I don't know. If I didn't. I didn't tell you. I was. I should have told you from the beginning because I'm super excited about it. He's cool, man. His name's Win. Uh, I didn't pick the name. Uh, Catherine and Noah really liked it from a show that they watch. Uh, so I was a little salty about that because I, I like the name Colt, which is the name he came with. But whatever. Uh, <laughs> we have to come up with our own name, I guess, in this house. So. Nah, Wynn is cool, man. It's growing on me for sure. Uh, the cat's growing on me. I never realized how much I would like to have a cat until I have a cat until I had a cat and put him on a porch. Like having an outdoors cat is a way better vibe. And he's cool. He he's orange and he kind of kicks it out there with us. Uh, the dogs are keep trying to attack him, so praying that 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 subsides in the near future. But yeah, man, so much to catch you guys up on. Um, man, I really miss doing the podcast, guys. I'm telling you, it feels like. I don't know, man. I, I, I'll share this with you guys now that I'm thinking about it and kind of speaking on it. Um, being out of the school program, you know, it's I don't have, you know, assignments and books to read about God. And um, I kind of we went to church a couple times when Noah was here. Um, I listened to some sermons of Tony Evans, which always gets me fired up and everything. Uh, and I read, you know, I finished off the book of Luke, which I've been in there for a minute now. So um, I don't know, man. I feel like I'm not in this like dry spell of like my faith, but I am in this kind of like a limbo feeling of like, what's next? Like, what does God want for the ministry? Like what, what is going on? Like, uh, where does he want me next? And, um, just really trying to, you know, ask him that and have him reveal it to me. But it feels like it's being revealed slower. Uh, and it's mostly, I feel like because I'm not, I've been really busy, you know, and busyness can be a good thing. It can be a very bad thing. You have to really balance your life, especially when you're trying to walk with God correctly, right? And I've noticed that when I have a whole bunch of other stuff going on, it's harder for me to want to get in my word because if my mind is just constantly thinking about the stuff that I have to do instead of, you know, making that time to build that relationship with Christ uh, when I'm sitting down in his word, which is the best opportunity to like, you know, get closer to him in my personal opinion. Of course, the other things that I mentioned, you know, worship music is still on in the house. It's still on when I'm putting Malachi to sleep. We're still praying as a family. We're still, you know, I'm praying. One of the best things that I've done recently, guys, that um, it took me a while to do this, which is strange for some reason, but, you know, you never know when the timing is going to be on certain things. But I wanted to speak this into you guys. Actually, last night I was thinking about it like, yo, when I'm doing the podcast, I have to share this because it is so unique and so special guys uh what i've been doing with malachi before bed when i'm walking with him uh i'll ask him some questions and he loves it he loves that connection of like you know asking him what his favorite um 
favorite drink is, what his favorite animal is, what his favorite snack is, what his favorite movie is, what his favorite show is, and just going down the list of things that he enjoys. And it's cool to see his answers change as he gets older, and especially with the shows and the snacks and stuff like that. Like he starts to evolve into this, you know, person of like, oh, you get to see what his really his interests are and stuff like that, and asking him questions about his day and asking him like oh, did you ride the tractor today? Did you do this? Did you do that? And just asking him those things to kind of refresh those memories to make him reflect on his day and just realize like before bed, like, oh, I did have a good day. And I don't know, man, I just started randomly doing it with him. And I just really have seen the value of that and the fruit of that from him and him and I's relationship as well. Because I've stressed you guys on this show that me and him butt heads sometimes we kind of struggle because, you know, he's he's like me, <laughs> you know, we, we we're passionate people, you know, and uh, and then after the questions, what I do, and this is what I was really going to encourage you guys in as well, is to pray with him. And it's not, you know, uh, I think a lot of people in my generation grew up with the Lord's Prayer or like now I name you down to sleep, that one. Um, and then, you know, God bless this person, this person, this person. And while we do do the, you know, I, I pray for the people in our lives, which I have a lot of people in our lives, you know, so having him be involved in that. And think of the names of the people that he wants to pray for is really special. And it really shows that his heart is big for people. And he's he uses his own brain and his own heart to pray to pray while, you know, we pray together and I include him in it. And it's really fun. Right. And then uh, after we get through, you know, that stuff, I just start praying over him and praying like, excuse me, I start praying like for his life and like what what is in his future and i pray for the people that are in our lives specifically you know if we say a name you know for instance noah we'll pray for noah and then i'll pray to god like after that and i'll start talking about like yo like please make sure you're with him when he's in this school system keep him safe make sure that he has good teachers lord make sure he makes friends and he doesn't get picked on and you know stuff like that we're really just kind of speaking into this like what you want for your kids and like what you want god to intervene with because I'm not in that school. I have no control over what happens in that school. And as we can see in this new age world that we're living in, we need to be a little bit more aware of what the teachers are teaching our children. So by me praying that it's giving it is putting it in God's hands to protect him and protect his heart and his ears and his minds from either indoctrination or from something else that could impact him negatively that could get him off the course of being, you know, a kingdom kid. So I say that to say this, uh, praying with your kids, but being specific and actually, you know, teaching them how to talk with Jesus in a way that's not so, you know, redundant or going through the motions is a way that they'll be able to learn how to form their own relationship with God as time passes. Right. And, you know, I wrote on here on my little notes that I started writing down that I feel like a little bit disconnected from God. And like, I haven't been spending that quality time with him in his word. But then I think of something like that, where it's like, yo, God is still like at the forefront of my mind, you know, when I'm putting my kids to sleep, when I'm raising them, when I'm serving them, when I'm helping them do something, when I'm feeding them. And it's like, I'm still trying to live like Christ and they are my first ministry. So I have to, I'm still learning that process of what it's like to do ministry uh, at home <laughs> and do ministry with the people that are in your life, in your family, and making sure that you're serving them. And I've even tried to work on this as far as like not griping and complaining about serving them, you know, because that's one thing that I've had in the past where if it could feel overwhelming, like you're having to do all these things that you don't want to do. And it feels like you're having to do everything. You know, we exaggerate. Oh, I got to do everything around here because I did the dishes. You know, it's like, no, like you're supposed to do the dishes, bro. It's your house, you know, clean up. So making sure I'm, you know, I'm just constantly trying to improve and grow, even if like some areas I'm not, I'm not improving or growing, you know what I mean? It's like a process, you know, sanctification really is a process. And I just want to encourage you guys to like, you know, take what we talk about on this show and just kind of ask yourself questions about how you can improve your life in that way as well. And luckily, man, um, I'll be sharing some stuff about this uh, more so as time progresses, but I got an awesome opportunity to write for a show that's all about self-improvement with like the way you like um, the way you see yourself, loving yourself, gratitude, um, transforming your life in a positive way. So I've been re really be been able to write and like get that stuff out and just honestly like research like ways to to improve your life and just the way you um you control your day and you give it to God, you know, and the, the person that I write for, um, is, is also spiritual, you know, so it's been awesome to incorporate God into our scripts that I've been sending her and she's done a great job with them. And it's been, I think seven episodes now. So over the last seven weeks, I've really been able to like, even though I haven't been doing the pod as much as I want to my own pod, I've been able to still, uh, feed the soul and make sure that I'm getting that, that, um, that learning experience out through reading and writing 
uh, stuff of good vibes, essentially. You know what I mean? So uh, you guys know I'm all about the good vibes. So being able to write for a show like that has been incredible. And um, I think it's going to be a very good, long-lasting partnership. And I'm hoping that uh, the show really takes off. I'll tell you the name of it real quick so you can look it up. I posted it on uh, Facebook as well. Uh, it's called Raising Vibes at the Treehouse with uh, Let Weaver. So give it a check out. The The tagline is it's a motivational and inspirational and self-help series that explores, elevates and pushes the culture forward through intentional conversations. Right. So it's been really cool. I'll do maybe a couple of separate episodes uh, in regards to what we talk about on that show. But what I talked about today on that show when I was writing and me and Catherine had a great conversation about it before she left to her sister's house today is about gratitude. And this is something that I feel like will help all those other things that I told you that we've been struggling with, you know, with complaining and griping and making sure that uh, we're walking in a way that's glorifying to God and not in a way that's that's feeding the flesh and being selfish. Right. Um, it's crazy what the, the shift of the perspective of what gratitude would do for your mind, it would do for your heart and it'll do for your emotions and just the way you live your daily life. Right. So I want to pull up a couple of the, the things that were spoken in this podcast that I wrote. Um, about the value of what having a a grateful heart does. Um, It produces a feeling of long-lasting contentment, which I feel is exactly what people are looking for in this broken world. And um, there's just so many gems in here, man. I didn't even pick out what I wanted to really say. I was like, I'm going to just improvise it. But um, here's a quote. It's not happiness that brings us gratitude. It is gratitude that brings us happiness, right? And the more that we sit and we sulk in our struggles and situations, the harder it is to be grateful for the blessings that are right in front of us. And seeing our present as a gift is the first step of having a positive perspective on the life that you have been given. I think we can all relate to this because we struggle and maybe you don't, but I do. Like we struggle to enjoy the present. We always say stuff like this. I'll be happy when this happens. I'll be happy when I graduate. Oh, I'm so relieved I graduated and now life is going to be good. I'm going to get these awesome opportunities and people are just going to be knocking at the door and say, hey, come be the lead pastor at my church. You have a great podcast, a great ministry, and people really flock to your show. I really want to bring you on staff and make sure you have a housing allowance and just give you give you a, a, a healthy, healthy salary to where you can only focus on God and people. You know, but it doesn't work out that way, you know, and like your expectations of like what you expect to happen after that certain thing happens delays the joy and it delays the gratification that you could be feeling if you just enjoyed your life in that moment of like, yo, I'm in this school, I'm in this program, I love this book, yo, I love this teaching that the professor had, I love connecting with this student that also thinks the way I do about about Thomas and, and Paul and, and John and just really, you know, build each other up in fellowship, you know, so it's all about gratitude. Am I grateful for the opportunity to go to this program or am I just waiting for the graduation, right? And that's all about up here. That's all about perspective, right? Another example, when I meet the right person, then my life will be good. I can't, and this is one me and my wife talked about today. I can't wait for my kids to get out of these diapers, right? And this is something where you're fast forwarding their life. Have you ever seen the movie Click? And you see that Adam Sandler is fast forwarding and rushing through his life to just get to this part. It's essentially that mentality of like, yo, you're missing out on all this other stuff just so you can avoid having to change a diaper or buy diapers for this, you know, three year old. So you're going to miss that time. You know, you're going to be like, oh, man, I. I miss the days when, you know, you didn't have to, you know, take him to like when you go to the restaurant and you don't have to take him potty three times because he's just going right there. (laughs) You know what I mean? So uh, it's a really, really funny example. But at the same time, it's like don't rush your kids through life just so you can get to the other side of like what you think happiness and joy really is. Right. Happiness is right now if you're grateful for the time that you do have with them, because like, you know, some kids, man, they go to sleep and they don't wake up the next day. Some kids, you know, they get diagnosed with something and it's like, bro. Like, enjoy your children while you can. Not every day is promised. Enjoy the right now. The present is a gift. So, yeah, I can give many examples, of course, of how we delay joy and gratification. But um, uh, gratitude is is the way to do that. You know, the present is what we, we have to focus on. And this allows gratitude to renew our minds. And the moment is now. Because remember, tomorrow is not promised. Uh, what else did we talk about in this podcast? Man, it was a good one. Um, I wanted it for myself, but, you know, I'll let her have it. And I'll just kind of touch on it with you guys. But that's another thing, guys. Um, I am working on something I'm very proud of. Um, I've been writing so much lately for people that uh, I decided, like, yo, um, 
they don't pay for the copyrights of this, you know, like it's not exclusive. You know, I'm not saying I'm going to run with, you know, everything that I write for people, but I'm going to start publishing this stuff that I write and just give people an opportunity to really see my work. And I just started doing that on social medias and posting up the blogs and just encouraging people to, you know, to, to hear my name as a writer, just so that, um, the future, you know, looks bright as my name, instead of being always a ghost writer, always want, I don't always want to be a Quentin Miller to Drake, you know what I mean? So, uh, making sure that, uh, I build up my own name as well in the process of doing these scripts for people. And of course, you know, I do offer, you know, for a small fee, you know, complete copyright where you can just have it and claim that you wrote it. But for this scenario, I just help people write it and um, I'm able to use it too. And, you know, it's, it's all a collaborative partnership. Right. Um, and that's the thing. I, I don't I don't want to like, you know, use a whole bunch of people's stuff, but it's something that is so you know powerful and I can use it for this show to help others. I'm going to, I'm going to share that because it's like, you know, these, these are my words and I want you to hear them too. All right. So I'm working on something big when it comes to the writing stuff. So be on the lookout for that. Um, I'm just getting, I'm trying to get this book out before I launch anything else. Cause I've been promising you guys the book and I just, I just finally got to the place of, of editing it like from paper. Uh, from all the edits that me and my mother-in-law did to um, on uh, the computer, right on the on the final manuscript. So manuscript is su- super close to being finished. I'm hoping to have it before the end of the year. I know I said summer, but I forgot Noah comes in the summer, and I forgot that I'm moving into my cribbo, and we have to build fences for dogs and chicken coops and stuff like that. So I've uh, been a little bit behind on the book. Do apologize, but it's coming. All right, cool. So essentially. Daily gratitude will radically change your life. Um, there's a whole bunch of other stuff about it. Changing your brain, the brain chemistry. It uh, improves anxiety, improves stress. It improves uh, pain. So many things that the gratitude does, that feeling, uh, it releases the, the the dopamine and the serotonin levels to just make sure that your life is is in a, in a positive production, productive way, uh, in a positive perspective way. And having a a gratitude journal where you write like the five things that you can think of that you're grateful for. And then even writing the things that you're stressed and worried about. And then realizing that you'll like God, you basically surrendering your life to God, you know, through that gratitude journal. And it's something I definitely recommend. I've done it myself in the past, uh, when I was living in the RV and I was really struggling. Uh, let's see if I can pull this up for you guys. I I am making a video right now. So, um, like you can see there, there's, there's stuff in here where it shows that, you know, your boy been been on this path before. And I definitely think I want to get back to that, especially after reading all the value, uh, all the benefits and the value that it brings of getting those ideas out and getting those and really just uh, transforming your mind to think positively and think of the stuff that you have to be grateful for and the things that you um, are, are blessings from the Lord, you know, and, and that's so important as a believer to really see that because it helps us get closer to him. It helps us see, you know, you know, when we are struggling with something that we can look back and be like, yo, God got me there to hear. Why did he do that? And then like being grateful f- through that. So, so much good stuff there. I feel like I'm getting a little long winded on it, though. So we're going to switch it up a little bit to save you on some time. Um, yeah, man, videos, too. Uh, as I said, I'm making a video right now for this. Uh, I've been trying to, you know, invest into the video aspect of this ministry and trying to grow the channel on YouTube. So if you don't mind, please, I know you got a YouTube account, please. I got a whole bunch of people that listen to the, listen to the pod that aren't on the YouTube. So do me a solid look up. I like birds podcast and find us on YouTube and subscribe, please. It'll help grow the show so much more as people are watching videos left and right nowadays. Those that are on the phone, right? Like if I post a graphic saying that there's a new episode out, you don't see the images anymore. All you see is the video. So I got to make some clips. I got to promote the show that way. Now it's the way the times are going. Even Instagram and Facebook are adapting the algorithm of TikTok. I don't know if you know that I do because I study the stock market and stuff like that. But they're they're basically stealing the the real idea and they're trying to push that and they're even trying to push that the advertisers and sponsored accounts and stuff like that. So you're not going to see me if I post a picture anymore. So I got to post a little video. So and I'm also investing my own money into the video uh, editing. Uh, I got a got a friend that does it through Fiverr. Uh, he's he's my boy and uh, he's been really helping me out with it. And I just want to make sure I'm able to keep you know pouring into him as well as he lives overseas and the U.S. dollar goes a long way there. So I'm trying to you know make sure he stays busy with work as well. So I appreciate your support on it. Please go subscribe. I'm also possibly haven't done it yet. I've been talking about it. Going to send out you know every first of the month 
a um, an email basically, you know, being like, hey, you mind just giving five bucks this month? It helps go towards the everything that we're doing for the ministry, which essentially is just, you know, getting videos edited, posted, published, and trying to make sure that we have the funds and the capital to do so. And that also goes to like the book stuff, you know, getting the editor to, to do a new manuscript for me, uh, making sure that we get it published on Barnes and Noble, ordering copies and everything like that. So um, I will probably be sending out a newsletter um, for a little $5 donation from everybody that listens or reads. And then that really adds up. And then of course, if you want to do more, you can do, you know, double, triple, whatever you're feeling on your heart. Any generosity is truly appreciated. Uh, shout out to Jake Roche, man. He's been really showing love about the show as well. Keeps uh, passing out cards. I got to send him some new cards as well. And, uh, so many other people, man, that have just been so faithful listening and just encouraging and supportive and sharing the show on their stories and just doing stuff like that. Still two years later, guys, we are two years in this game of doing a podcast about Jesus. Like who would have thought, who would have thought that people would still be here for it and want to be around to help see it grow and just really give back and pour into the show. And even one of my listeners, uh, former friends of, um, still a friend, but former coworker of uh, Bar Taco, her name's Kayla Smith. She's asked me personally to officiate her wedding, you know, and I think that's so incredible. I'm super excited about that opportunity in November. And uh, it's just a blessing from the Lord, you know, opening that door and putting me on her mind as somebody to ask to do that. So you boy got to go get a suit, got to look good. I uh, got to make sure that, uh, you know, I have my, uh, what I'm going to say ready. And uh, it's a good opportunity. I'm will- willing to step up and, um, and do it for the kingdom, you know, and do it for a friend. So all that, you know, stems from the show and just the love and the positivity of it. So truly appreciate you guys so much. And this is a new season. I would call it that because we're, you know, we started in the summer of 2020. Um, you know, obviously we're on lockdown then, but then we took a break in summer of 2021. We just took another break of 2022. So I always feel like it's good to start back up for the fall and fall is actually when we have our most listeners. October is just a really busy month for us. Uh, so I wanted to make sure we get, you know, um, get a little momentum going into October as well. Okay. So, uh, gave you guys the book update. Uh, I definitely want to talk more about the connection with God and making sure that we're staying in tune with him and making sure that we know that even if we're, we feel like we're not with him, he is with us. All right. Because that's what his word tells us. That's what uh, the Holy Spirit is for us. It is our counselor. He has gifted us with that. Uh, we are we are, you know, we are adopted in the, the children of God, you know, so we're we're able to be Christ is in us. You know, he, he works through us. And that's why it's so important to get a grip on those emotions and the thoughts that may be negative when you first wake up or when you start your day or when something irritates you or doesn't go your way, because those thoughts and those emotions can have bondage on you for how and stronghold on you for how you react to somebody and how uh, your words may hurt somebody. And I've been guilty of that myself uh, many of times. That's why I'm kind of speaking about it. So making sure that we're if we start with that gratitude, if we have that perspective of positivity, if we have that giving people the benefit of the doubt, that forgiveness, that love for others in our heart, it becomes a lot easier to to walk with Christ in a way that is respectable and feel like you're actually, you know, close with him and closer to him through that. And I think well, I do I know this too. Me and Catherine also had a conversation that was really good about uh, her and I connecting and making sure that we're making time for each other throughout the week because we're so busy with projects and, and family and kids and Noah going back and forth and appointments and all this stuff that we have going on that uh, it can get hard at times to especially because I work at night too. That's when I do a lot of my writing and my, my, my orders and stuff like that through Fiverr. So making sure that we make time for each other at least once a week to where we can really just connect and talk and ask questions and have a conversation. And then when you connect that way, it helps you connect in other ways. Right. And uh, it it's it's like you're and, and that made me really think, because like to in order to feel that intimacy, you got to connect first. So in order to feel, you know, the presence of God, you got to connect first. You got to want to be put in that effort and that energy to make sure that you're showing God love by getting in his word, by praying to him, by talking to him, by asking him for for guidance and letting him be your father and making sure that, you know, you're, you're living out his will and you're making sure that you're, you know, following his commands for like the way he wants your life to be lived. All right. So I think y'all caught my drift there. <laughs> maybe we'll have another baby on the way. No, I'm kidding. Uh, maybe. Who knows? Um God's will, right? Anyway. Okay. And also I read this in this book I'm reading called, um, 
Your Next Five Moves by Patrick Bet David is kind of a, a business book, but a lot of good um, insight into life and just like people, really, you know. So it talked about knowing somebody's love language and, you know, you don't have to, um, I'm not saying bend over backwards to appease anybody's, you know, love language, but if it's your wife and it's your partner and you know that her love language is this, well, step it up and do more of that. That's it. That's all you got to do. You know, so my wife's love language is acts of service. And so I st- I've been stepping it up, you know, um, for instance, like filling her water with ice and making sure that she's like she's filled up to the brim of water, making sure that uh, setting up her toothbrush or her little or her towel, you know, um, to where the spot that goes where she doesn't have to go grab it before she showers and just, you know, doing small stuff like that goes a super long way, you know, and um, yeah, is it annoying sometimes, you know, like serving people? Yeah, of course. But that's what, you know, being a Christian is all about. That's what loving the Lord is all about. That's what serving the Lord is all about. It's loving those people, you know, and it's and it, it's, it's your wife. You know, why wouldn't you want to take care of her? You know, I love to take care of my wife. It's harder for me to take care of my kids, though. <laughs> you know, it's just like they're more needy and I, I can't really communicate with them as well sometimes. So sometimes I'd be struggling with that. But still, it's like trying my best to make sure that they're good, like filling up Malachi's water, making sure he has a snack, making sure that, you know, his diaper's good, making sure that Zeke's diaper is good, making sure that they're they're getting love and hugged and all that stuff, you know, so trying to get better at that, man. I think a lot of my focus this summer has been really my family and how to love them better and like be a better dad, be a better husband, which I mean, I don't think that pursuit should ever run out. I don't feel like you should ever be fully satisfied in that. And I haven't been. And that's the thing. I'm, I'm trying to constantly improve my life, even if it feels like I'm not directly in the driver's seat and, and God is right next to me because I'm spending so much time in his word and I'm so on fire and I'm so uh, doing his will and, and making sure I'm keeping every command. But, but even if I'm not, even if there's things that I'm like still regressing in or uh, struggling with or sinning in, you know, like living in those things that aren't aren't of God, it's like, no, he's still he still saved me. He still is, is working on me. He's still transforming me as the days and the, and the weeks go by. Uh, because it's like, no matter how much I feel like I get off the path, it's like, I'm always pulled back on it. Like I always want to get back in his word. I'm always trying to like, all right, let's, let's tone, tune into Tony Evans and like, let's get, let's get God like in your life today, you know? And, and that's the thing. It's, it's making that time to just, he sees your effort. He sees you being like, all right, yeah, I know God, like, why have I been watching so much YouTube? Why have I been working so much? Why have I been, you know, enjoying, you know, one too many drinks? Why have I been eating poorly, you know, over this last few weeks, you know, like, asking those questions to yourself and making sure that you're making sure that you're talking to God about it and helping him to get through you. Like, I think one thing I've noticed recently was like, I, I found myself trying to hide in the bush about something with God. And I was like, Oh, that's not good. That's ugly. Uh, so then I like realized and I repented, you know, and then I was like right out in the open with it. And I was like, God help me with this, with this struggle, you know, or like, or give me clarity and direction of like how to go about this struggle you know, like take this away from me, you know? And, um, and I think that's just, that's valuable. And it, and it, and it's certainly, I feel like going to be a game changer going forward. If I can start identifying that and practicing that and like go, going through with that. Right. So, um, and in the book, it said, uh, in the five moves to change your life by Patrick, Bed David, it said five to 15 minutes of connection can absolutely change somebody's day. And actually, and it can actually change their mood. It can make them feel loved. It can make them feel like, valued and seen and and that's so true because when i'm like you know i take that time to connect with malachi like play on the floor with him with the cars or go uh drive his new little um electric tractor around the front front yard or whatever um or take him on a little walk or something and just show something that me and him can connect with it like really builds him up and he's good for the rest of the day he can play by himself he's in good spirits he has a good attitude you know it's like those little things really add up and it adds up with your wife as well those five to 15 minutes so and that's not a lot of time guys five to 15 minutes so making that time for that is so important and gratitude rolls into this you know being grateful for that person making sure that they know that they're loved and they're seen and they're appreciated you know leaving a little little note leave a little note for your wife you know let her know that that she's loved and everything like that and um the small things they add up and i'm starting to see that i'm starting to see that the small things are actually the big things so i hope this encouraged you (laughs) I don't have any Bible verses for you today. We're not doing any study or anything like that. Uh, it's just to kind of just go over with you guys what, what's been going on through, uh, over this last uh, few weeks. Um, it's been quite the journey, man. We've just been so busy since being in this house, man. It's been awesome, but it's also been overwhelming. 
homesteading is a constant trip to Home Depot and Lowe's um, and tractor supply. So uh, I feel like I'm definitely living a life that I never imagined, but it's always been my dream to, to, to do something like this. And it's become my dream as the years have progressed for sure. Uh, so I can't say always, but it's always been my dream to, you know, have a house and my family in it that's happy. And we have an awesome little porch and uh, your boy just got a little truck. Just hey, got a little truck because uh, my wife got tired of going to Home Depot and putting a uh, fencing stuff in her SUV. So we got a little truck. I should say I got a little truck, a little Toyota Tundra. Not little, but you know what I mean? I like to downplay it, you know, try to stay humble, but also like, hey, got a truck. Let's go. So, yeah, man, I hope you enjoyed the episode, man. Hopefully you had a laugh or two. Uh, hopefully you got encouraged. Uh, hopefully this wasn't too long for you today. Do me a favor, man. Check out the YouTube if you can. Uh, check out the website, ilikebirdsministry.com. Be on the lookout for that email as far as uh, contributing so we can just keep getting these videos up for you guys and just growing the show. Uh, much love, much appreciation. I'm so glad you're still rocking with us after these couple years. Uh, really appreciate you just being along for the ride and the journey. And I'm, I'm hoping you're growing in your faith as well. Even when you feel like you backslide, just realizing that you want to get back to God. You know, we're seeing some stuff in our culture right now that just shows that, yo, we're not doing the right things. We're not loving the Lord. We're not putting the Bible first. We're putting it to the side. We're reading all these other books. We're worshiping all these other uh, false gods. Uh, we're over here just doing things that are uh, repulsive to the kingdom, you know, like a drag show in a church, you know, everybody covered in masks, you know, it's just, uh, there's some things that are happening right now. The Pope saying that uh, every denomination should be accepted. And that's, all, that's one word religion, y'all, that's in the book of Revelation. So uh, let's not get it twisted, y'all. There is an agenda going on that is um, fighting against uh we're not fighting against flesh and blood. We're fighting against spirits and principalities. And we're seeing that right now in our culture and in our world. But we have to be the light. We have to be the Christians that rise up and live in our faith and let the sword, which is the word of God, be what we use to combat what is happening all around us. All right. So I encourage you, you know, rise up, go to the public square, share your testimony, be a light of Christ. Don't ever sacrifice truth for unity. All right. Because that's not what uh, the Lord calls us to do. Uh, he calls us to love people. And love him but he also calls us you know not rock with the wicked you know what i'm saying so um much love to you guys cheers as always uh see you on the next one i feel like i could keep going but i'm gonna i'm gonna slow down right there and just uh really appreciate you guys for being here all right peace